Good day, good day, good day. Cruise and Mahogany here and welcome back to my channel. So now we understand why we have a menstruation cycle, why it's so important as a protective measure for you as a woman, just in case you have a pregnancy. But now we're going to talk a little bit more about nature. We're going to go into a lecture given by Priscilla Clark, the queen maker. She's going to tell us a little bit more about why males are still an enigma to science. You know, science still doesn't understand why males are here. Yeah, they have a question. They're questioning, are they even needed? Uh, what you may not know is that all of us women, we have within us genes that allow for what is called parthenogenesis, which means that we can, because as women, we can, we have eggs, we are born with generations within us. And we have genes, just like many of nature's creations that can allow for them to reproduce on their own. You know, nature is a thing. You know, men, a lot of times they ask us, well, well, we need it for, for you to have babies. If we didn't, we wouldn't hear you wouldn't have babies. Well, nature has many other ways in which she has this occur. And not all things are always the same. You know, nature changes. Nature is the one that runs this show. We are just a part of nature. And as as such, are susceptible to whatever nature decides to do. So, we're going to, I'll come back and tell you more, you know, as we listen to what Princella has to say. Let's, 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 let's see what she's saying. A researcher from the University of British Columbia offers results that only deepen the mystery of why males arose on the evolutionary stage and why females continue to tolerate them. Reporting in the current issue of the journal Nature, Dr. Rosemary J. Redfield of the Department of Zoology demonstrates that a female, by mixing her chromosomes with a male's, perpetually tempts, uh, tempts genetic disaster. It turns out that the male sperm cells are likely to be riddled with far more genetic mutations than are the female's eggs. Anywhere from two to 100 times more mutations depending on the species. Mm-hmm. You'll understand this. By the, time, by the time we get to the end of this, you will understand more about what we're talking about here. But just as a precursor, just so you know, yes, you know, it's said that the woman's eggs, when continuously cloned, causes mutations, but you just heard that gametes, which come from sperm, causes even more mutations, which are not pleasant. Have you looked around? And especially, you know that, I don't know about you, but where I'm from, you know, I used to hear that old men have worms. Mm -hmm. Old men have worms. So as we look at society and we look at the types of humans that we are creating, that we are producing, and we wonder what's wrong with the mind, what's wrong with their thinking, the capacity of the brain is, you know, we've evolved to think that we're so much better than nature's other creatures. But part of that was because we were more selective in how we procreated and who we procreated with and when we procreated. And we made those choices based on not, hmm, he looked good, he killed, I feel, you know, whatever, whatever. Those are not the reasons we would procreate. And right now, you see people just having casual activities as though that's just the way to do it and that is not the way to do it and given that most genetic alterations are undesirable 
possibly resulting in disease or frailty in one's offspring, the female appears to be getting lousy, a lousier deal from sexual reproduction than scientists previ previously had imagined. We take it for granted that all reproduction should involve genetic contributions from male and female parents, possibly because sex is such an essential and engrossing part of our lives, Dr. Redfield said. But in fact, we still don't know why this kind of reproduction evolved and has become so common. Rather than helping to solve this controversy, my paper points out that the problem is worse than we had thought. Hmm. You see, a period is set up to prevent you from being sucked on by another invading body's parasite. Okay, now yes, we have wonderfully, and I'm a wonderfully beautiful child that came from that process. Yes, we all are. Anyone who's listening to this, you also are. But we also need to remember how honored we should be about our parents, our mothers going through that process and then also caring for us after that process in order to allow us to grow into the age that we are. We know that most males don't stick around much longer after they've given the sperm because that's not their role. They're, it's really mothers that stick around and take care of their young and nurture their young, provide for their young, protect their young. It's a huge investment and that investment should be honored and that investment should be well carefully thought through before going forward on that venture because it is a lifelong venture because once you do have a child it changes your life for the rest of your life and if you survive the costliness of that investment it is something that you should have processed and have accepted prior to even getting pregnant or even having intercourse and allowing for that to happen. And again, we understand, I understand that not always is it by your choice. There are times that by force, you are made pregnant. It's also a consideration that you don't have to take that responsibility, even if it is by force, even if it is by choice, you got, you know, you open them legs and you allow for it to happen. It is a huge investment. Be mindful of that. It is not easy. And we appreciate, I appreciate my mom for doing her, her service for me. I appreciate that so much. I think so many more people though need to consider it and really Think about it before they just open up. Because, again, there are so many chances of mutations. And as we're going to discuss more in this little less, you know, few minutes that Princella is going to be talking, is that there's a possibility that so much can go wrong. And so much does go wrong. We see that there's many people who don't have the processing capacity the capabilities and it just affects all of us. It, like it affects all of us. It's just something to really consider. The discrepancy in mutation rates among males and females is a simple matter of cell division because a male generates so much more sperm than a female does eggs his cell, his sex cells are dividing comparatively faster and more often. It is during cell growth when chromosomes are being copied for apportionment into new, into two new cells that the greatest likelihood of genetic missteps arises. Scientists have long suspected that males may be responsible for the great majority of new mutations that appear in a population of animals. 
but they have only just begun to gather supporting evidence from DNA studies. Among humans, the rate of mutation in a man's sperm cells may be at least six times greater than in a woman's egg. Eggs. What is more, the mutational excess mounts with the man's age, suggesting that women may do well to follow men's time-honored tradition and seek out young mates. Ladies, you have been manipulated and brainwashed for centuries to desire penis at the, at the level that you do. Mm -hmm. You have been manipulated into worshiping penis. You have been manipulated into hating other women and you hate them so much that you want men to take her place. You don't actually like men. You like women in men's bodies because everything that you want the male to do is the nature of a woman. The male is a parasite by nature. He is a weapon formed against the feminine by nature. We're going to explain a little bit more about why we're going against nature by continuously having sex with men. Having sex just out willy nilly. We're going to see. We're going to get the understanding. Because there is an adverse relationship between men and women, male and female of any species. So we're going to talk more about it in tomorrow's video. But here's the last bit of what Princella has to say. And we'll conclude at the end of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's more. In the new report, Dr. Redfield took some of the new findings that have emerged on the high rate of mutations in sperm cells and incorporated the figures into a computer model comparing the costs and benefits of sexual reproduction. Her results call into question a prominent theory of why sex evolved to prevent potentially harmful mutations from gradually gathering in a female's genetic stock. By this notion, Asexual reproduction is a one-way street to total genetic decay. As mutations arise during the cloning of the female's eggs and those genetic errors accrete dangerously with each succeeding generation. So like Dr. Goldstein said, right? That women produced males to carry genes for the times that they wanted to genetically survive. For the times that they wanted to genetically survive. The male is expendable. And he's only here to pass genes at certain times, really. Their existence is still questionable. They have multiple ways of making you L sacrifice yourself for their damn survival. You must look at the foundation of life. And it starts with the damn biology that all of y'all seem to be overlooking and wonder why your relationship's fucked up. Wonder why it just ain't working. Because you going against nature, that's why. One reason for sex then, then could be to inject a new round of genes into the mix to help keep the mutational load at a minimum. Enter the accommodating male and his refreshing sperm. But Dr. Redfield's new calculations suggest that far from cleaning up the mutational mess, the male's contribution may only make it worse. In her computer model, she compared the mutational outcomes of females who reproduced asexually and females who made it with males bearing a varying number of mutations in their sperm cells or gametes. 
it did not take many extra masculine based mutations before asexuality began looking like the superior strategy. Deloy rotifers, tiny invertebrates who live in drains and puddles went off sex about 80 million years ago and have cheerfully diversified into several hundred species since then without regaining the inclination. Maynard Smith described them as an evolutionary scandal since they seemed to disprove the assumption that sex was in any way a biological advance. The various current theories about why males evolved and still remain in existence are nicely set out in Matt Ridley's book, The Red Queen. They are also covered in Olivia Judson's racy and wonderfully informative volume of Dr. Tatiana's sex advice to all creation. Different theories rejoice in names like Muller's Ratchet, Kondrashov's Hatchet, and the ep uh, eponymous Red Queen of Ridley's book, named after the Lewis Carroll character in Through the Looking Glass who perpetually runs around getting very far because the landscape moves with her or without getting very far because the landscape moves with her. This last theory seems to be the front runner at the moment. It is based on the idea that sex is part of a continual race to outwit germs. What is clear, however, is that the consensus that existed on this topic from Darwin until around 1980s has totally broken down. The purpose of males has instead become one of the biggest unanswered questions in science. My guess is that we will eventually come to understand fertilization by males as an evolutionary compromise poised halfway between invasion and alliance parasitism and symbiosis they're parasites by nature so somehow it's a compromise there is already much evidence to show how females resist the process biologically for example by stripping male sperm of part of their dna and how males try to control reproduction against their females will for example, by killing off competitor sperm in the female genital tract or alternatively killing the competitors and their offspring directly later on. This is the nature of the male. Did y'all see the dude who found out that the, that this little girl who is dead was not his daughter? And what did he do? He went to the grave site of the child, the deceased child and destroyed the headstone of a deceased child. This is their nature. And you wonder why your relationships fucked up. And then a ma the majority of you will sit up here and rally with males against women to say it's just the ones you choose when this is in all of nature. If sex is the device to reduce the mutational load, and if the male mutation rate is indeed higher, then it doesn't look like a reasonable idea for a female to have anything to do with a male and his contaminated gametes well i'm curious to see your thoughts about this subject in the comment section below i will i mean i love reading your comments i appreciate each and every one of you who does share your comments with me i know it's a pretty controversial topic it's probably something you never really considered because I know for a very long time, I didn't know this. They didn't teach me, teach me this in, in sex education in school. Um, I, I didn't know. This is a very spiritual thing. We don't just want to bring any and every entity into this existence because we pay for that. We pay for that.
Well, comment below. Let me know your thoughts. And subscribe to the channel because please subscribe. Subscribe. Why not? Thank you for watching the video. And I'll see you in the next video. Later.